These are five of the 10 watches I want to be reissued, so let's get right into it. So reissue watches are one of the most popular genres in the watch market today, with a number of brands actually re-releasing Heritage-inspired models. So some of the highlights that I really liked include the Longines Heritage Chronograph with that tuxedo dial and the two-register chronograph format. Another one is by Omega, who just recently released the reference CK859. And I particularly like, from my favorite brand, Vacheron Constantin, their history collection, which does exactly this. Take old watches, repurpose them, and modernize them a little bit, and create really what I feel are some of the best watches in the market today. However, there are those watches from many brands that haven't been reissued yet that I would love to see be done. The first being the IWC Ingenieur Reference 1832. The IWC Ingenieur has quite a rich history. It was originally released in 1955 with the Reference 666. And this was a watch that had an iron cage fitted inside of the movement so that it could be ultimately anti-magnetic. Now, another watch had this same purpose, the Rolex Milgauss. It was actually released in 1956. So the Ingenieur itself actually predates the Rolex Milgauss. Now the reference 1832 was a design that was done by Gerald Genta in 1976. It was kind of IWC's answer to the new integrated bracelet craze that we saw a number of brands get into, such as Patek Philippe with the Nautilus, Audemars Piguet with the Royal Oak, and of course Gerard Perigo with the Laureato. Now the IWC Ingenieur 1832, I feel is such a pure design that really did not need to be messed with. If IWC were to re-release this in a 38 to 40 mil case size, with that integrated bracelet, even offer potentially that strap chain system like the Overseas has where you can change the bracelet out for a leather rubber strap. I think it would be an absolutely knockout design that would be at an accessible price point and would be super popular overall. So IWC, if you're watching this, please re-release that watch. The next watch I'd love to see released is the Omega Seamaster Chronograph. Now this is a very vintage inspired watch that I think would play very well in the modern market particularly because those vintage design and vintage aesthetics are really popular today. Another thing to mention is the fact that there aren't really that many great aesthetically well-designed chronographs at an accessible price point. And those that are typically sell for quite a premium. So overall, I think if they were to re-release this in a 38 to 40 mil case size, even 42 millimeters, uh, with a potentially three to one movement inside of it, just as the originals had. I think they'd have a knockout that would really play well in the modern watch market, that would have a great following, and I think would be very successful overall at retail. Next is a watch that is long overdue for an update, and that is the Rolex Milgauss. It was a watch, as I mentioned, that was originally released in 1956, and the purpose was mainly for engineers to have a watch that was amagnetic. And so originally, to achieve this anti-magnetic feature, they had an iron cord that would be within the actual watch movement to avoid any form of magnetism. Now that technology is technically outdated by modern Saturn, given the fact that a lot of parts in the watch's escapement are made of silicone, which are amagnetic to begin with. And so what Rolex can achieve by removing that iron cage is a much thinner profile on the Milgauss overall. Now I wouldn't just want them to update technically the movement, but also I would love to see an update to the design. It's a watch that has really needs a freshening up, something a little different. I think if Rolex were to inspire the new update to the Rolex Milgauss to that reference 6541 with that command bezel and that honeycomb dial, but still keep that lending both hand and even potentially that GV glass, they might have a design that I think would play very well, but would definitely go a long way to freshening up the Rolex Milgauss line that I really feel needs an update. The next watch is from one of my favorite brands and it is one of the most important brands historically. However, it breaks my heart to even mention them because the modern state of the Breguet brand is frankly quite abysmal. Overall, their watches just don't make sense. They make too many watches and too many different variations and they really just need to slim their line overall and update their aesthetic slightly so that they're more modern and they appeal to the newer demographic of watch collectors. One thing that pains me also is the fact that Breguet continues to make their best watches in super limited batches. I'm talking 20 to 100 watches that only go to their most exclusive clients all the time. And so Breguet can never really build that foundational customer base that they can bank on in the future. And the watch at the very top of the list, in my opinion, is the Breguet Type 20. This is a watch they've done in a number of different variations historically, uh, but I really love the plain, simple, two register format of that original Type 20. I think it's a really pure design that lends itself to be very utilitarian, is definitely vintage and military inspired because it is a military watch. 
And overall, it's a design that should have never been messed with in the first place. Now, Breguet does a lot for me to hate the brand itself because they've released the Type 20 in two different variations with that two register format in that vintage inspired uh, design at only watch, which means there's only one example of those watches, which really is so annoying because those watches are so amazing. And I know they would have great retail success if Breguet would release them to the general public, but instead they do the route that they always do, which is release them in a super limited quantity that only their most exclusive customers can ultimately buy. So Breguet, if you're watching this, please be faithful to the Type 20 and re-release it in the way that it should based on those historical designs, because it's the one that us fans of Breguet and us fans of watches really want to see released. So the last watch for this list is one from Cartier and it is the Cartier Tank Aiguiche. It is a jump hour with a kind of spiraling minutes and it's such a clean design. I absolutely love this. It's really the epitome of what a dress watch should be. When it comes to Cartier, we're seeing their steel dress watches gain a lot of popularity, be it the Santos Dumont, be it the Tank, be it the Tank Francaise, be it even the Tank Americaine. I think the fact that Cartier only releases the Tank Aguiche in platinum or in gold at a super premium in super limited quantities is really a lost opportunity because it's a design that's appreciated by a number of watch collectors. And I think if they made it in a watch in steel, for example, at a somewhat accessible price point, I think it would play very well with watch collectors and would be a watch that would witness a lot of retail success. Overall, design-wise, there's really not much like it in the industry, period and really would show Cartier's prowess with respect to watchmaking, which is often neglected by the watch buying public. So if Cartier wants to gain that respect, not just for its watchmaking, but also wants to gain a broader fan base for its watches themselves, I think releasing the Tank Aiguiche, for example, in steel, or just re-releasing it in serial production, be it in gold or platinum, would go a long way that again, is classic, it's timeless, and is one that Cartier doesn't have currently, but that can really bank on to gain popularity. So guys, those are five out of 10 watches I'd love to see re-released in the market today. Let me know what you think down in the comments below and stay tuned for part two because there are a number of other watches that I'm sure you guys will love. Guys, I'd really appreciate it if you liked the video, subscribe for more in the future, and guys, I'll see you in the next one.